get in order, but Benny, I'll wish to make some brief remarks. At opening ceremonies, I made it a point to thank all of the people that I've worked with for the last five decades because they are part of what made my community my community. This is my 51st business meeting. I doubt that there's anybody here who's been to more. And I want to again acknowledge this community as one that has in particular made me feel welcome. And I am honored as guest of honor to represent not only the entire community, but this community in particular is one that I wish to call recognition of. And thank you for making me welcome 51 World Cons ago and for all the World Cons since. Thank you all. Things as much as we can, but we have a lot of business and probably limited 
time. Um, I think I can explain that when we get to such a case. Um, let's see. There are also standing walls, the way you usually have your uh, souvenir book. Uh, and in that is the Constitution and the standing rules for the business meeting. So we do vary from Robert's rules in some ways because of the standing rules that have been adopted. Uh, if you have uh, something you want to do, and you're uncertain how to do it, and, and there's probably a procedure, you can ask for help. And to a reasonable extent, we will try to assist you. I might mention that my style is to generally to kind of forge ahead rather than like wait a while uh, for people to see if they want to object to do something. So if there's some piece of business and I, uh, let's say I announce some result or some decision, <clears throat> rather than waiting around to see if anybody wants to take up the hand, I tend to sort of proceed, but really until I've finished announcing the next question, the next piece of business, you can still interrupt. You don't have to, just because I've started to speak about some following items, you're not yet precluded from uh, interrupting if you have a point of order or some, something of that sort. Uh, we do, at this preliminary business meeting, set the time limits for a number of questions, <clears throat> both here and the ones that come up at the main business meeting. And I'd like to caution people that you cannot figure out how long the business will take by adding up those time limits. The time dilation effect, in particular, people are not normally charged for the time that it takes to walk to the microphone. Uh, so setting a lower limit is <laughs> sometimes advisable. And uh, the assembly can always extend uh, by two-thirds of the, uh, the amount of time available for the debate of a question. I might also comment that it's uh, desirable to maintain some formality in the proceedings. In particular, people should not normally address other persons by their name uh, or even by a pronoun, but it's desirable. it's desirable to say something like the previous speaker or the person, the maker of the motion or something like that. Uh, to refer to other people. Uh, I won't uh, you know, be overly zealous about enforcing formality as long as things are proceeding uh, you know, productively and there's no complaints, but if things get uh, more contentious, it may be necessary for me to be more formal about things. And also, we, uh, I plan to try to have a, a break during this meeting. Um, gonna, my goal is to do it around 11.30 but depending on how business flows, it may have to be uh, a bit earlier or later. So, with this, yeah. Yeah. with that, I'd like to uh, go ahead and proceed with the uh, committee reports. Uh, so the first report is by the Mark Protection Committee. So I'll call on that. Uh, Kevin Stanley, and uh, we'll give the report for the committee. Kevin Stanley, he, him. All right. Uh, honorable Chair, in the desire to make it absolutely clear, I stand before this meeting solely as a representative in the form of the Vice Chair of the Mark Protection Committee, not of any other entity of which I ever have been or ever will be a member. Okay. Can you still hear me? Yes. yes. Thank you. There is a report from the Mark Protection Committee, which is the only permanent standing entity of this organization. Uh, and it is the Mark Protection Committee is also the Board of Directors of World Prime Intellectual Property, a legal entity that owns our service marks outside of the United States. The MPC, uh, an unincorporated, acting as an unincorporated association, holds the marks within the United States. The report begins at page 44 and includes the report of the Hugo Awards Marketing Committee, which also manages the WISPIS websites. In the interest of keeping the meeting moving along, I will not read anything from this report, but I will yield for any questions. Very not. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chair. Thank you. The next item is the report of the Fifth Victim Advisory Committee. As I am the chair of that committee, I will ask to get to the 
fifth regard. Consider the editorial change to the listing of Hugo Awards that would make it easier to refer to the story categories of the block, and in fact ended up proposing a motion uh, to do that, which occurs later in the agenda. Uh, as we were last year, we have proposals elsewhere in the agenda, so uh, the proposals that were reported in 2019 would have normally been submitted to the 2020 business meeting, have been deferred and occur later in the agenda for this business meeting. Are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. So I think I'm a little off with the slides here. Just going to go a quick overview. So this is where we are Thursday. So uh, we have to do a sitting agenda timelines and so forth. Um, these are what's events will be in the next couple of days on Friday is the first main business meeting. So today they'll be talking to the microphone. Well, it's on the table. I mean, no, no, they told me not to move it. Okay. I can lean over towards it, I guess. Is that okay. Well. Okay. Uh, there'll be nominations for the Mark Protection Committee meeting at uh, today's meeting. Okay. and so forth. This Saturday is the site selection meeting and includes various site selection related uh, businesses. And we have a lot of business, so it's possible we'll overflow to Sunday, although uh, that doesn't always happen. And we'll have to have a Sunday business meeting to take care of various business uh, that has not been uh, taken care of previously. So, uh, do we need to reappoint members for the, within the picking and committee? Do we need to reappoint members? Um, I guess that's true. Yes, yeah, so I guess the necessary objection that the picking and fly committee will continue with the same membership as it currently has. Hearing no objection, so that uh, I guess we should do the. Because uh, we just had the Mark Protection Committee report, we should have the nominations for the uh, Mark Protection Committee. Um, let's see. If you, if you want to run for the Mark Protection Committee, please come see me. I've got consent to run forms to be filled out. Uh, all of the incumbents, uh, would be because of the, what happened last year, the, there are six slots open, only there would only be three slots open. So in this election, the three uh, who, uh, people who have the, the uh, most, who are selected first in the preferential runoff will be elected to three-year terms, and the next three will be elected to two-year terms. So the slide here shows the incumbents, Judy Muniz, Stephen Boucher, John Coxon, myself, and David McCarty. Uh, is there any objection to considering the incumbents to all be nominated? They've all submitted a written consent to nomination. I see not. So the incumbents are, are nominated. Anybody else who wishes to, uh, anybody from the floor can nominate somebody else. They can't actually appear on the ballot unless they submit a consent uh, essentially now at this meeting. Uh, they can be written in, but their write-in vote will not count. 
unless they submit a consent, written consent, by the end of the voting, which will be in tomorrow's meeting. Are there any nominations from the floor? Seeing none, I guess we'll have a fairly simple ballot. If there are no nominations uh, tomorrow and there's consent tomorrow, we can just re-elect the incumbents uh, by unanimous consent. Parliamentary. Uh, yes? The parliamentary inquiry. Okay, Paulus. I note that there are five incumbents listed on the slide and there are six slots available. Is it possible to close nominations before we have six nominations? No, we have to have six. No. Oh, we have six. We have two other people running. Uh, okay, there are two other people who have, who, Thank you. who are said to be running, but have not, or if so, why are they not being nominated at this meeting? Right. Who are they? Uh, who, are the, who are the incumbents? No, who are the, who are the oh, 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 I'm sorry, Dave McCarty, uh, Nicholas White. Nicholas White. Michael Wilmot. So just one of Mike Wilmot. So those and these five incumbents, sorry, that means there are seven candidates. There are six incumbents, huh? There are only there are six slots. There are six slots because there are there are five on the slide. There's Judy Bemis, Stephen Boucher, John Coxon, myself, and Stephen. Yes. I nominate Nicholas White. Okay. We have a nomination for Nicholas White. I nominate Mike Wilma. Okay. Second. We have a nomination. The nominations need not be seconded. We have two nom four nominations for Mike Wilma and Nicholas White. Um, oh, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Hold on, my mom. You know who the other incumbent is? You know who the other incumbent is? No, we'll be another thing. Oh, yeah. I nominate Tony Dashoff. Tony Dashoff. I'm sorry, what was that? I nominate Tony Dashoff. Tony Dashoff is nominated. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, you will need to submit the uh, consent? She's got it. She's so, got it. Okay. Uh, any more nominations? Seeing none. Um, I, these were, our report has been given. Uh, there's a report for next is a report by the Wolcott Munner's Guide and Editorial Committee. Uh, we have a representative. My name is Mike Walnuff. I'm the chair of the Wolcott Runner's Guide Committee. Uh, we've submitted a report. Basically, we've made more incremental progress. Uh, we've added the timeline page. We've updated the WISPAS page. Thanks uh, to Bobby Armbruster for supplying the content of the timeline uh, page. And thanks to Linda Denroff for cleaning up more of the uh, uh, idiosyncrasies that we have in the documents because of the catastrophic failure about 10 years ago. So we're still cleaning that up. Uh, Kevin helped with the WISPAS page. Kevin Stanley. Cheryl Morgan, of course, uploading it on the website, and this is the current committee as it stands. Are there any questions? I have, I have a question, Mike, which is there were two or three reports that I cleaned up last year that never made it to the website. Can you please get sure. them? Sure. You, you notified me of that, and I ran out of time before this convention to look at that, so that's next on my list okay. when I get home. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. What is the website? Uh, I believe it's in the documentation, but if you go to wispus.org, there's a link for committees and other stuff. It's and if not, you follow, huh? It's not on, it's, it's, I got the report right here. It's not on it. It's got everybody's uh, email address, but it doesn't have the site. 
Okay, well, if you send me an email, I'll send you the link. Because guide at wispus.org comes to me and uh, the webmaster. Well, we'll get you get it into the minutes for this year. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. The next order of business are the financial reports. Uh, this is special. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. There's two more committees. Mr. Chairman, the following committee continues to uh, maintain the long list of roll cons. Uh, and if there are any questions or comments, you can send them to us. The uh, address is in the uh, printout. And basically, we would like to ask that this business meeting continue to endorse the activities of the committee for another year. Thank you. My apologies for screwing up a bit here. I'm a little rusty at presiding. And then there's the Hugo Award Study Right, next is the uh, Hugo Award Study Committee. Yes. Uh, I, I believe we need to go to reauthorize the following committee. Uh, that's true. Is there any objection to continuing the <coughs> committee with the current membership? Hearing none, it is continued. Uh, next is the Hugo Award Study Committee. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, long story short, we didn't tender any business this year. Uh, Cliff Dunn, uh, I, we didn't tender any business this year in large part because of the constrained business meeting circumstances as well as the bundle of fun that the last two years has been. Um, we would ask to be reauthorized. In addition to our report, I would note that we have set up a Discord server which will both expedite being able to ch actually chat with each other rather than swap emails and allow people who are only interested in one or two items to not have to deal with the floods of emails that occasionally break out when a war and debate gets going. So I would ask for uh, reauthorization. Okay, is there any uh, objection to continuing the Google Award study committee? Uh, Hearing not, the committee has continued. Next is the uh, non transferability committee of uh, Daniela. Daniela, the non transferability committee uh, met uh, with the purpose of producing a resolution that had been referred to it. Uh, that resolution was approved within the committee and was sent and is now part of the agenda for later discussion. Thank you, sir. And we do not recommend that the committee be reappointed unless the business meeting decides to yet again kick it back. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, uh, I don't know, actually next is the Volcan and that's it, financial reports. Um, I understand it's, uh, that the Chairman Roach is going to give, be able to answer questions on the um, San Jose Volcan, uh, Volcan 76 financial report. And he has a program item that he's present. We could perhaps change the agenda to move that earlier. Uh, there he is. And is there any objection to doing that? Very not. We'll proceed with that report first. Good morning, my name is Kevin Roach. I use he and him pronouns. Um, I will not go through the details of our financial report, but uh, I am aware that there was a lot of interest in the lawsuit results and some of the pending business we still have, so I am more than happy to take a few questions at this time. Are there any questions? In that case, thank you. Oh, sorry. If you saw the uh, article in file 770, that pretty much covers our public response at this point to Alpha lawsuit. 
We did spend well over $100,000 defending WorldCon 76. And if you didn't catch it, the settlement we paid was less than the cost of half a day of trial. So this was um, the best solution. And every claim against the convention was thrown out with the possible exception of defamation and racist or racism. And uh, for $4,000, it wasn't worth taking a chance in court for that. So, thank you. Good morning, I'm Dave Gallagher, uh, representing Fund Zealand. I can answer any questions that anyone has up regarding the uh, Fund Zealand financial report. You didn't get to that yet, but that's okay. We were doing anticipation. Doing this? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Does anybody have any? Okay, the, hey, I want to expedite things. Fund Zealand is uh, the, the 2020 World Cup. Um, speaking for, sorry. Hi, this is Janie Shea from um, the Cancelon, but I've administered the fund, but the anticipation, sorry, the anticipation funds. If it's not clear from our report, um, explicitly, this is the end of our reporting to the uh, business meeting, because we're out of funds. Thank you. report shows that Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next report is uh, Lone Star Fund 3. Is there a representative present? I don't see any. The uh, report is on page 7. Any agenda? They still have money, I guess. Next report is SAS Fund. Uh, on page 8, the agenda. Uh, I guess not. Next would be Mid America on page nine of the agenda. <coughs> Can Mid America representative to uh, speak to answer questions? Page 14 in the agenda. Uh, is there a representative from Dublin? Uh, let's see if it's, yes. Hi, Vincent Buckley. I can speak for Dublin if there's any questions. Are there any questions for the Dublin Financial Board?
Columbus has no money. They should have been they Columbus has it last year. Okay. Uh, this con, I would imagine there might be somebody from this con here. Uh, and, uh, there's our, their report starts on page 20 in the agenda. Uh, does anybody have questions on that report? Is there a representative of this country uh, that could answer such questions? None of the above, it would seem. Okay. In next, we have Shaikon 8, starting on page 22 in the agenda. There are uh, representative. There is. Mr. Chairman, I am Dave McCarty speaking for Shaikon 8. Shaikon 8 would like to officially nudge, nudge, nudge everyone here who does not have a membership yet to visit our table, and I will answer any questions. So there's a space in the uh, agenda and the slides for standing rule changes, but we have no uh, proposed standing rule changes this year so far. We have to be special. Uh, next section is on resolutions. And uh, the first four of these are Hugo eligibility extensions. The Constitution provides that if there's limited distribution, uh, eligibility for Hugo can be extended uh, for another year by two thirds vote. Uh, so I, let's just go through these and, uh, and let's see. Okay, so, the initial one is the Hugo eligibility extension for nine days. Uh, there's more information about this in your agenda. Is there any objection to extending Hugo eligibility for nine days? Seeing none, uh, eligibility is extended. The next item is Hugo eligibility extension for beyond the infinite two minutes, which is also in your agenda. Those are both on page 26. Is there any objection to extending Hugo eligibility for beyond the infinite two minutes? Seeing none, eligibility is extended. Third is Hugo eligibility extension for E.G. Psycho Warman on page 27 of the agenda. Is there any objection to extending Hugo eligibility? Seeing none, it is extended for E.G. Psycho Warman. And the 
The last of the four is Hugo Eligibility, extension for the last of Carl Edward Wagner. It's also on page 27 of the agenda. Is there any objection to Hugo uh, Eligibility extension for that work? Uh, yes. Ann Lurie, she, her. Um, it seems to me that if something was released on Vimeo on December 12th, that it's that that is general release. I know nothing about this particular work. I just worry that we're setting a precedent that is probably not one we wish to set. Are there any further uh, comments on this question in the sense of the usual Cuba eligibility for this work? Uh, we'll proceed to a vote. It requires two thirds in favor to extend eligibility. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? I believe the ayes have it. Uh, two thirds in favor. There, the Hugo eligibility, uh, I do have that the Hugo eligibility is extended for PG Psycho Borman. No. I'm sorry, the last one was Carl uh, Edward Wagner. And the uh, last of the resolutions here, the uh, story block is, so uh, the story behind the story block resolution is that uh, the secretary is given fairly wide latitude to make some adjustments in the constitution bylaw and standing rules to uh, change uh, section numbering and titles and uh, adjust grammar, for example, to put all the singular or that. But the general layout and organization uh, is under the control of the business meeting. And uh, what this proposes to do is uh, instruct the secretary to use their uh, editorial authority to renumber uh, some sections so that the uh, story uh, categories are adjacent. And that's uh, described on pages 27 and 28 in the agenda. So this can be done by a majority vote or obviously by unanimous consent. Is there any, uh, this would not change any substance concerning any award, it just changes the order of things. Chair, I move for unanimous consent. I can't actually move <laughs> unanimous consent, but I'll ask if there's unanimous consent. Uh, seeing no objection, there is unanimous consent. So. <laughs> I suppose if you really want to do that, you could suggest that the chair is rambling on. <laughs> and you're asking the chair call for unanimous consent. Anyway. Uh, Does it pass? Does it pass? Right. Yes, it was passed. There was no, there's no uh, opposition. So it passed by unanimous consent. Thank you. You are welcome. So, um, we now get to constitutional amendments. And initially, there are these constitutional amendments which uh, came up and uh, would have normally have been ratified last year. We need to September, don't we? Huh? We need to September. Yes. September. Okay. Uh, but because of the circumstances, in effect, ratification was delayed till this year. Actually, they were like not ratified, they were repassed, but that has the same effect. So uh, we need to set <coughs> debate time limits. Uh, the chair suggests. Um, uh, these, oh, these are, these are not, uh, huh. well, okay, um, ignore the bottom of the slides, I suggest six minutes. Parliamentary inquiry. Yes. Uh, Kevin Stanley, he had, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, I believe the first two items are not ratifications from the past year, these are sunset clause. Ah, you are correct. There is a distinction, even though it works out to the same sort of vote. I want to yes. Thank you very much. The chair continues to be only be mildly confused. <coughs> so it's been a long week already. These are our two amendments, are ones that were previously passed and ratified. But when they were ratified, the idea was that it would sort of be a trial run to see whether how well they worked. And there was a specific uh, proviso adopted with them 
that they would have to be placed on the agenda uh, for this business meeting, and if we did not reapprove them, that they would automatically be removed from the uh, list of constitution. So, uh, the question that will come up is basically whether they will be re-ratified to essentially defeat the effect of this automatic sunset uh, removal from the constitution. Uh, with that clarification, we are just setting the time limits, and actually I'd like to set the time limits for each of the, to do for the best series to six minutes. Uh, is there any objection to that? Yes, I see an objection. We will, the way this works is, uh, we, I suggest an amount, if there's a, no objection, that's it. If there's an objection, we vote on it, if it's defeated, we then go to a lengthier process of filling the blank. <clears throat> so those in favor of six minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you, those opposed. The ayes have it, and the time limit is six minutes. The Lodestar Award re-ratification. Chair recommends six minutes. Notwithstanding what it's I said on the slide. Uh, is there any objection to six minutes for that re-ratification? Seeing none, the time limit is up to six minutes. Yeah. Uh, the next item, we're, by the way, on, now on page 30 of the agenda. <coughs> Clarification of World Con powers. Uh, this is a ratification. This is a, a ratification coming up. Um, the chair recommends four minutes. Is there any objection? Seeing none. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I, I can't see you. Could you go to the microphone? No, no, no. Wait a sec. Okay, there's an objection. Please sit down. Uh, we will vote on four minutes as proposed by the chair. All those in favor of four minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? I believe the nays have it, and the time is set at four minutes. Yeah, you can try to wait. Good, good thing you're keeping track of this. Uh, okay, uh, the, so the procedure is to do a filling of a blank for this, and the value of six minutes has been proposed. Um, uh, are there other proposed values for this? Uh, people have a time that people would like? I believe Ms. Cooper. Oh, suggestion. Do six minutes. Oh, she said, yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, uh, six minutes has been proposed, and there, and there seems to be no other proposed value. Uh, is there any objection to six minutes? We had seven, six minutes. Okay, thank you. So the next uh, item is E4. Position of NASFIC ballot, which has to do uh, when a, a uh, NASFIC selects another NASFIC. Um, just advise everybody at this meeting uh, to handle any issues should that occur. So I would suggest uh, four minutes for this also. Are there are objections to that. Not one or case. Seeing no objection, the time limit is set to four minutes for E4. Uh, next is item E5, um, which basically just clarifies that the existing uh, practice of the administrators and site selection filling in the voting number, because uh, in many cases the voter does not have the voting number, so they, they can't do that, but they have to clarify that that's okay. This has been passed and is uh, coming up for ratification. Um, I propose uh, six minutes for this. Is there any objection to that? Okay, time is up to six minutes. Item uh, E6. Uh, so this is uh, just to clarify uh, cases in which the Hugo administrator can move a nomination uh, to uh, within a, a uh, Nominator's ballot. Um, I guess I propose uh, six minutes for this. 
Is there any objection? Seeing none, I set the six minutes for E6. E7 is a uh, change to the uh, series provisions, which has been passed before and is up for ratification. Um, I propose uh, eight minutes for E7. Is there any objection to that? Seeing none. You said eight minutes? Eight, yes. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> I'm going to speak a little louder. Uh, E8. Uh, keeping the five and six provisions uh, to uh, have the, the number of uh, finalists on the award ballot uh, is uh, we remain at six. Uh, I propose uh, six minutes for that. Is there an objection? All those in favor of six minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, I'll we'll say the nays have it. We'll do it. What would you like? Um, ten minutes. Ten minutes. Are there other values proposed? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Any other values? This is like nominations. You don't need a second. Okay. Ten and eight have been proposed. We will vote from the longest uh, to the shortest. Uh, as soon as one achieves the majority, that's what it's set to. All those in favor of 10 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Uh, <laughs> Maybe we should practice serpentine voting. <laughs> Uh, 
um, which has to do with termination of sales and supporting memberships. I believe it primarily codifies an existing practice. So I propose a time limit of eight minutes. Any objections? Seeing none, eight minutes. Uh, E11, the short title claims that it clears up the definition of public in the artist categories forever. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. But, uh, it does add words to that thing. So, uh, I guess I uh, suggest eight minutes is the time limit for this. See no objection. So, uh, do people want to have a break at this point? Yeah. No. No. Okay. I hear more noise than yeses. Okay. We're, we're close to the end here, so perhaps we can just forge ahead. Um, so, uh, we have new constitutional amendments. Uh, first one, F1, on page 34, your agenda is uh, one episode per series, it generally speaking reduces the number of episodes in a series that can be considered for the Hugo from two to one. Uh, I propose uh, 12 minutes for this. Is there any, this is, uh, there's an objection. Uh, so all those in favor of 12 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you, all those opposed. The ayes have it, and the time is set for 12 minutes. These are the new constitutional amendments, so this is the first time they're coming up. Uh, F2, so this moves the deadline for submitting new business to the uh, Constitution from the standing rules. It doesn't actually change it. So I propose uh, eight minutes for F2, which is on page 35 of your agenda. Is there any objection? Seeing none. How many minutes? Eight. 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 Sorry. F3, which starts at the right bottom of that page. Uh, starts with the first play. This has to do with forwarding the membership information to the following Worldcon, uh, which uh, is primarily used only for allowing the previous Worldcon members to nominate. And it basically uh, says that it can only be transferred with the permission of the member. I propose a uh, big time of uh, eight minutes for this. And we don't see any objections. So, set for eight minutes for F3. F4, short title, shut up and take my money. <laughs> 36. Uh, uh, so, this was a motion which was referred to the nitpicking and fly specking committee. Uh, and uh, so, this is sort of the wording we came up with. However, uh, I don't know if I should speak this way as I'm in the chair, but the committee decided to propose an alternative. So on the next page, this is on 30, F4.36, there's F.4.1 on 37. So what I would propose is a, a debate time of uh, essentially uh, 10 minutes here, and the, uh, the amendment by substitution will automatically get five minutes when we get to that. Um, okay, well, <laughs> timekeepers request that we use even numbers. How about we make these, uh, over, make the overall 12 minutes for F4, and uh, uh, when we get to it, by special rule, we'll make it six minutes for the amendment by substitution uh, to be perfected.
there any objection to those time limits? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it is part of the 12. So six comes out of the 12. Yep. Yes. Could you use the microphone then? Because we're being streamed. Because the apartment inquiry is probably complicated enough to use the microphone. I believe it is within the purview of this meeting to decide between F4 and F41. Am I correct in that assumption? You are correct. Um, well, so actually this is a proposed, yes. So we can uh, make that decision at this meeting. Uh, and if there's no objection, I'd like to finish the time setting and then come back to F4 this time of F4. So F5 uh, basically changes some time limits specified in the Constitution, uh, which are currently expressed in terms of months to uh, expressions in terms of days. Uh, we would happen to use the assumption that months are 30 days. So that seems pretty straightforward, so I would suggest a time limit of six minutes or F5. Is there any objection? No, the seeing none. Except for six minutes. Uh, F6 is the non transferability of voting rights. This is the report of the committee, uh, which we had the committee report on earlier. And uh, this seems this is the first occurrence, and uh, as you can see, there's some complexity here. I would suggest uh, 14 minutes for this. Mm -hmm. Is there any objection? I see hands up to objecting to 14 minutes, I assume. All those in favor of 14 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? The ayes have it. I'm going to set for 14 minutes. This is a reminder uh, as we proceed to actually Work on these items, we can, uh, the assembly can, by a two thirds vote, extend the time for debate. Uh, last item, F.7, short title, best audiobook. I propose a time limit of, uh, yes, uh, what purpose does the member have? Voluntary inquiry. Voluntary inquiry, yes. Is it appropriate at this time to move to postpone this? up the audiobook uh, uh, object to consideration of that amendment. Postpone indefinitely. Postpone indefinitely. indefinitely then. Uh, Is it appropriate to move make a motion at that this point in time? Yes. So if you do if you okay, it's been moved and seconded to postpone F seven indefinitely, which has the effect of pulling it through this session. Uh, having uh, done that for the year of time, automatically under our rules, four minutes of debate. Uh, if somebody wish to speak, the press the maker, wish to speak in favor of the yeah. uh, book. Yeah. Ooh, can can I come? Yeah. Well, you come to the microphone, please. Uh, Kevin Hewitt. Uh, no, no, she gets, she's, 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 made, oh. she's the maker of the motion. She has priority. Hi, I'm here um, representing audiobooks, which we would love to have name, as part of name. Michelle Cobb, which we would love to have as part of the Hugo Awards. Audiobooks bring together the performance, the human voice, done by beautiful narrators who are huge supporters of all awards and would love to spread more love about the Hugo Awards. Audiobooks have been growing. We, we recorded over 71,000 titles in 2020. And we are seeing exponential growth, nine years of double-digit growth in audiobooks throughout the U.S. market. Additionally, audiobooks allow for people with learning differences and visual disabilities to be able to experience beautiful written words. So we are here to represent and be in favor of adding audiobooks as a category to the humans. Thank you. I have serious Kevin Hewitt. I have serious concerns about this proposal. 
because a lot of times audiobooks come out the same calendar year as the, as the written work, and this would allow, as written, a work to win two separate Hugo Awards. And I object to this proposal on that basis. I think it needs to be reworked. I'm not objecting to awarding audiobooks at Hugo. I object to the possibility of it being able to win an audiobook Hugo and a written work Hugo in the same year. That concludes my objections. The speech in favor. Uh, the what is in favor and what is against? I'm dizzy. What you're using is this is very speech in favor. In favor of the underlying. Well, I am opposing the motion in which the gentleman. Well, somebody else should speak then. Who else? Let me. Somebody wishes to speak in favor of the motion. Oh, all right. Okay, you're, you're sorry, you're speaking against. You go ahead. Yeah. I'm, I'm speaking against the, 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 the motion that is, is being made because I think the appropriate course of action would be to send this to the, to the study committee which exists so that we can try to rework it rather than just simply dumping it in the trash. And I would, I would explicitly invite the uh, movers of the amendment to join the Hugo Study Committee. Hugo Award Study Committee. Sorry, legal. Uh, another speech in favor of postponing and My name is Terry Neal Sheher, and we had this debate in 2014 when we passed uh, an amendment to the Constitution to consider audiobooks alongside novels. An audiobook is eligible for Hugo the same way that the novel of the audiobook is eligible for the same Hugo. And so I think we should uh, postpone this indefinitely, which does not preclude the Hugo subcommittee from taking it up on their own. Another uh, speech uh, against postponing it definitely. Seeing nothing. Okay. Very good. Sorry, you're behind the curtain. You're behind the call. Uh, another speech in favor of postponing it definitely. Chair Kevin Stanley, he had this point where I do believe that the correct form for that which would reduce some confusion on this back and forth is that you ask those who are in favor of considering the proposal and those who are opposed to considering the proposal. I believe you're technically correct, but we've kind of been doing the other thing. So I don't know, I'm switching at midstream. But this I believe it. So we are about to hear, I believe, a fever, a speech in favor of the underlying motion. Hi, Kevin. I'm uh, Angie Cornett from Graphic Audio, part of Recorded Book Media Company. Oops. Um, we do thousands and thousands of audio books a year. Uh, we do them at uh, unabridged to straight narration, as well as performance, dramatic, so it's another form of the audio book. It's a performance. So it's, both, uh, it's an art form, slightly different than, obviously, the text written word. We're performing it, just like a movie. But you guys do have movie categories for your audio for your books, too, right? So anyway, I wish that you'd consider, uh, because we, we love science fiction and fantasy, um, love our buddy. And so that's why I'm here to represent and say, yeah, please consider. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Time has expired against the motion. Against the postponement. Correct. Okay. Uh, that speech was a speech in favor of the underlying motion. That was a speech against. Okay. Is there further speeches uh, against the underlying motion? Yeah. That is to say, in favor of postponing it. If it's, if it's a performance, it's eligible in dramatic presentation. If it's just a straight reading, it's eligible in best novel. I do not think the Hugo Study Committee can fix that. Name, please. Oh, sorry. Terry Ann Marie, it's still. 
is 45 seconds in favor of the objection to consideration. Or against the other Whatever you want to call it. Against the other <laughs> Are there any further speeches against the underlying motion? Um, I think if we want to discuss audio books as dramatic presentations and maybe carve out a space for them, that would be best done as a holistic re-examination of the entire dramatic presentation system and would not be best served as part of this motion. I didn't get along with that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, uh, for some reason... Martin Pine said something. He said it should be combined with the other, he said the equipment that should be combined with the other dramatic cue goes in a consistent way. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, further speeches against? 30 seconds remaining. The underlying motion. Seeing, uh, yes. No. No. What are you Terry Ash, she, her. We're having the debate that we should be having two days from now. Um, and maybe we should just have the debate. So we should actually take up this motion. Okay, the other, the other side, actually. I, I suggest we proceed to a vote. Uh, it requires two thirds uh, to sustain the objection. So uh, uh, I will proceed in that way. Those. Uh, I don't know if we're right. No, I don't care. Please clarify which objection we're. Oh, sorry. We're moving on the postponement indefinitely. I shouldn't say postponement. So it takes two thirds in favor of, of uh, postponing indefinitely. To do that under our rules, which are special. Under regular Roberts rules, it's a majority, but we have a special rule of order such that postponing definitely requires two thirds. Uh, does that clarify that? No, it does. So, those who are in favor of postponing indefinitely, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, I believe the votes were about equal, meaning that uh, postponing indefinitely clearly fails to achieve two thirds. So, this will be taken up. I had at least suggested 12 minutes for this. Uh, is there any objection to that time limit? Yes, there's objection. Those in favor of 12 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you, those opposed? Uh, the nays have it, so we'll fill a blank. Is there a suggested time? 15. 15 has been suggested. Are there other values? I'm close, happy to eat a number. It has to be. They have to be integer numbers. Do they? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's, it's uh, what? Okay, even up, it says even. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll leave it. Okay, uh, so I assume 16 would be especially yeah, the person who's just 15. Are there other even possible? Okay, somebody here said 20. Are there other even possible integers? <laughs> Hearing no other even positive integers, so between uh, we have 16 and 20 proposed. Uh, so we'll following the filling, I said we would use the filling the blank procedure, so we'll initially vote on 20, and if it fails from that majority, we're going to vote on 16. <laughs> all those in favor of 20, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? I believe the ayes have it. Okay, serpentine. Okay, all those in favor of 20 minutes, please stand. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Thirty. Okay. Uh, 
20 to 30 the days have it. We'll now go to 16 minutes. All those in favor of 16 minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? The ayes have it, and the time limit is 16 minutes. So, we said we would go back to F4. Uh, so, we currently have uh, a motion and a amendment by substitution. Um, I guess. Thing maybe for would be for Kent Kuhn to preside since the both of these are actually proposed by the picking and vice working committee. Uh, Who's going to represent the nitpicking and flight spectrum? So the uh, initial F4 is the rewording of the motion referred to the Nitpicking and Flight Hacking Committee, which basically uh, limits the uh, transmission of names and contact information from the site selection voters uh, to the winning committee. To the extent that the voters have agreed to that, and uh, so we worded the uh, main uh, F4 motion to accomplish that desired objective. However, uh, on consideration that the Nitpicking and Fire Selection Committee thinks that anonymous site selection voters are a bad thing, and the winning committee uh, needs to get uh, the name and address information for uh, the voters who are members of that selected uh, Volcan, and that therefore the right way to interpret this is that somebody who votes in site selection by so voting is agreeing that their contact information will be transferred to the winning convention. It can transfer as directed in the Constitution. So uh, it, the proposed alternative is that every site selection ballot shall include the statement on the site selection ballot. By casting a site selection vote, I agree to the communication of my name and address provided here on directed by the Constitution. Um, so I guess that uh, as chair of the Interpreting Fly Spectrum Committee, I move that alternative wording as an amendment by substitution for the uh, initial F4 shown on page 36. Thank you. Is there any member who will speak against the substitution? Um, I can't see yet. Um, actually, Joni hasn't. <laughs> Joni Dashoff um, is a former site selection person, uh, administrator. There is a clear difference between collecting site selection voter information to confirm you are eligible to vote as a member of the administrating convention and what information is passed on to the next winning committee in fulfillment of the European privacy laws. Therefore, the substitution is bad and the first proposed version is good. Thank you. Very well. Um, actually, uh, actually, technically, I should let Ben speak, but uh, will Ben yield? Will you yield? Yeah, I, so. yeah. I wish to respond very briefly. Uh, I understand the difference between information to confirm that you are a member of the administering uh, committee of convention mm -hmm. and information transfer. This only applies to name and address provided on the site selection ballot. That is the only thing that's transferred. No other records by the administrating convention are required to be transferred. It's 
essentially you pay to, to join the winning committee. You write down your name and address for the winning committee on the ballot, and it goes to the winning committee. Hey, 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 hey. if you want to speak, so I was your objection was that there's a distinction between the information held by the administering committee. No. Can I clarify? Sure. Well, no. Unless somebody else really feels they have to. Sorry. Right now, without the permission added to the site selection ballot, you are normally proceeding, assuming that this is information for the administrating co committee, that the proposed original amendment is to restrict what is passed on to the winning one is only your name and membership number, and you get to choose whether you contact the winning people and otherwise protect your personal information, which may be restricted for dissemination by your job or your location being Europe. America has yet to catch up. Excuse me, the U.S. has yet to catch up. Mr. Yellow. I think there is a fundamental misunderstanding of what you are buying when you vote in site selection. You are not buying anything from the current committee. The administering committee is not the thing that you are buying it from. You are buying a supporting membership in the winning Worldcon. The administering committee is merely acting as an agent. They have no control over your data. You have bought something from the winner. And I think it is unconscionable to say you are buying something, but we're not going to tell you who bought it from you. Okay. Um, there's, there's someone in the back with a card. I cannot see because of the lights. Pink card. Oh, it's Cliff. Yeah. <laughs> That's me, Cliff Dunn, again. Um, Mr. Chair, I would note two things. First of all, under the European laws, I have to wonder what happens if somebody crosses out the section um, as to whether that would count as refusing permission under the GDPR. Uh, second, while well, I understand Mr. Yalo's comment that, you know, it's Could a- Could you speak more slowly? Sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm trying to preserve my time here. Um, while well, I understand Mr. Yalo's concern if somebody wants to buy a product that they would then be unable to exercise the rights of, I don't think it's our problem, our job, to stop them from shooting themselves in the foot. If, if, if they want to throw away their $50 or whatever, let them. Speech in favor of the uh, substitution. Um, if you can come up to the microphone, please do so. At least I can see from the microphone. Dave Wallace. Um, okay, two points. One is, in terms of the argument that the information is just being called by the member, all the, the administrating committee needs is the name and the member number. That's sufficient to say, yes, you're eligible. They don't need the address information at all. That's only useful to the purchasing uh, uh, convention, that, that is the uh, convention being selected. And secondly, I think if we pass this and have a, and you have to have an opt-in to get your membership, there are going to be every year dozens of people buying supporting memberships that don't get their supporting memberships and are going to be pissed off. And I think we should honor those people and you know and, and take the uh, substitute motion. Here. Thank you. Speech against the substitute. Um, yeah. Yes, you. Also? Yes. <laughs> Elspeth Hobart. I am against the substitution for the very simple point that the original has an opt-in clause. And I think 
think on all of these passing on information or having your name up on a member's list or whatever, you can opt in. I'd like to send that slide. Well, speech in favor of the substitution. Um, in the back, well, not back. back. Yeah, I'm having a very hard time seeing people. Mom, are you having? <laughs> Josh in front of the world, he, him. So Mr. Yellow has an excellent point in that this is not a transfer at all. The GDPR specifically allows you to hold, process, and transfer information expressly for the purpose of providing a service that someone has purchased. That is not required to be opt-in. That is implicit to buying a service, is permission to process your information for the purpose of dealing with the service. Therefore, we don't need a GDPR in order to deal with this data. Excuse me, order. Yes? Six minutes has elapsed. Very well. Uh, William Walmart. Uh, I just want to clarify that in the case of the original statement, that I'm not precluded from including in their, in, there's no direction as how they get permission. That, in appears, order to do that. that appears correct to me. I mean, we're not requiring that they do that. We're requiring that they do uh, anyway. They can go beyond what is required of them. Yes. Thank you. Um, time having expired. Uh, all those in favor of the substitution, please raise your hand. I have to debate. Very well. I have a motion to extend debate. Is there a second? I have a time there. Five minutes. Six minutes. Six minutes. Four. All right. Four minutes. Is this to come out of the original 12 or an additional four? Well, it won't matter because tomorrow we get new minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, 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 that's the way the rules are set up. Um, you start off, start your time, but you clock over again with every new, new session. Well, what are we extending it by now? It's four minutes. We have an motion. Uh, all those in favor? Oh, all those opposed? Oh God, do we have? It takes two thirds. Yeah. Extend debate I, I, takes two thirds. Yes, I do. We do not have two thirds to do extend. So no, if that fails. All those in favor of the substitution, please raise your hand. All right, we can do a serpentine vote if, if, if there. I assume there's 10% would like to do that. All those in favor, please stand and... What are we voting on? You're voting on whether or not to substitute. You're voting on in favor of the substitution. Okay? The, the extension of time failed. Please. Please. Uh, Honorable Chair, I believe what I was hearing coming from the back of the room was a request that a certain team vote be taken on the motion to limit or extend limits of debate. Is that correct? No. I had already the ruled. Who made it? The motion. I had already Did you ruled. All right. All right. I'm not going to going to keep back and backtracking. Um, start it. Start in the front, please, and let's count for those in favor of the substitution. Substitution. Mm -hmm. Over in the corner. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 33, 33, aye. All those opposed, please stand or otherwise show. Yes, count. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight,
Substitution will be on the agenda for tomorrow. And I believe, Don, you can have the 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 Okay. There was a third one. Uh, well, this is a 
not Elspeth. It's Elspeth Hilar. Hilar. If these are just the park screen, that's not the minutes. The minutes will be reviewed and corrected. It does not go out to the world, just us? What? It does was it? being streamed, so we should correct oh, the spellings. Okay, okay. Anyway, are there any further announcements here? Correction? Hearing none, is there any objection to adjourning? We stand adjourned.